Hello and welcome to News at 6 on Rajya Sabha TV, a program that keeps you updated on the days happening from across the country and from around the world. But first up, the headlines that we are tracking. Prime Minister Narendra Modi inaugurates Indian Agricultural Research Institute in Jharkhand, says Eastern India has the potential to unleash a second green revolution. In his radio address, Man Ki Baat, Prime Minister focuses on the girl child. Opposition Congress asks why was he silent on Lalit Modi controversy. Flood fury spreads to more states. Many pilgrims evacuated from Uttarakhand. Four more Gir forest lions perish in rain. Waters are taking the toll to nine in Gujarat. And hours after Prime Minister Alexis Tsipras calls for referendum on currency crisis, 18 governments tell Greece that its bailout package will be terminated. Well, the top story that we are following, Prime Minister Narendra Modi today inaugurated an agricultural research institute in Jharkhand, calling for a second green revolution in his address on the occasion. He asked the farming community to adopt scientific methods to enhance food grain production, particularly of pulses, which India has to import because of shortages. Here is more. Prime Minister Narendra Modi laying the foundation stone for an agriculture research institute in Hazari Bagh in Jharkhand. Modi urged agricultural scientists and farmers to usher in a second green revolution to meet growing food demands in the country. <laughs> The Prime Minister also asked the farming community to adopt scientific methods to increase food grain production, particularly pulses, to overcome import shortages. He said the Indian farmer is lagging behind in availability of good quality seeds, water and power. The Prime Minister also made a pitch for the government's slogan of Per Drop, More Crop. He said the government was taking steps to train youth in soil testing so that such labs could be set up on the pattern of pathological labs for humans. Bureau report, Rajya Sabha TV. Well, Prime Minister was in Jharkhand, but on the radio, Prime Minister Narendra Modi urged the nation to enroll in several welfare schemes launched by the government in recent months. Now, voicing concern of the declining sex ratio in the ninth edition of his radio program, Man Ki Baat, the Prime Minister pitched for a campaign to save girls through the social media. Prime Minister Narendra Modi focused on women in his monthly radio program, Man Ki Baat, on Sunday. Raising concern over declining sex ratio, he urged people to enroll in two insurance schemes launched by the government. The government's flagship life insurance scheme offers renewable one-year life cover of 2 lakh rupees for a premium of 330 rupees. The accident insurance scheme provides coverage of 2 lakh rupees for a premium of 12 rupees per annum. Our home, खाना पकाने वाली कोई बहन हो या बर्तन साफ करने वाली बहन हो या हमारे खेत में मजदूर करने वाली कोई बहन हो या हमारे परिवार में अपनी हरी बहनें हो क्या रक्षाबंधन के पवित्र त्यौहार को ध्यान में रखते हुए हम 12 रुपये वाली या 330 रुपये वाली जन सुरक्षा योजनाएं जीवन भर के लिए अपनी इन बहनों को गिफ्ट दे सकते हैं Appreciating the initiative and pitching for a campaign to save the girl child, Modi asked all fathers to send their selfies with their daughters to him. In this context, he also mentioned the Beti Pachao Beti Parhao initiative. 
In January, the scheme was launched in Haryana, where sex ratio figures are worrisome, according to the Prime Minister. Haryana ka ek chote se gaon ka sarpanch beti bachao abhiyan ko is prakar ka mod de tab man ko bahut anand hota hai aur ek nayi aasha jagti hai. Isliye main apni prasannata to vyakt karta hu, lekin is ghatna se mujhe prerna bhi mili hai. और इसलिए मैं भी आपसे आग्रह करता हूं कि आप भी अपनी बेटी के साथ सेल्फी विथ डॉटर अपनी बेटी के साथ सेल्फी निकाल करके हैशटैग सेल्फी विथ डॉटर जरूर पोस्ट कीजिए द प्राइम मिनिस्टर आल्सो रेफर्ड टू द थ्री सोशल सिक्योरिटी स्कीम्स लॉन्च्ड रिसेंटली व्हिच इंक्लूडेड अटल पेंशन योजना एंड एन इंश्योरेंस स्कीम फॉर द पुअर To take the initiative forward he suggested that before the Raksha Bandhan celebrations this year these policies should be gifted to as many women as possible Bureau report Rajya Sabha TV And the Congress today led rival parties in criticizing the Prime Minister's Mann ki baat address the party leaders accused Modi of selling what they called only dreams and said that they were disappointed that he did not speak about Lalit Modi Focusing on a clutch of social issues, the Prime Minister's Mann Ki Baat program once again touched a chord with audiences who welcomed his message. जहाँ जहाँ सूरज गया, जहाँ जहाँ सूरज की किरणें गईं, दुनिया का कोई भूभाग ऐसा नहीं था जहाँ योग के द्वारा सूर्य का स्वागत न हुआ हो। मोदी जी के विचारों को जब रेडियो मंत्रणा या रेडियो पर इनका विचार आता है, तो हमेशा सुनने के लिए पूरी जनता पूरे विश्व की जनता सुनने के लिए पूरे भारत की जनता सुनने के लिए इस इसको उत्सुक उत्सुकता सबके बीच में रहती है प्रधानमंत्री जी ने आज मन की बात के माध्यम से उन विषयों को चुना है जो साधारण हिंदुस्तानियों के जीवन स्पर्शी विषय हो जो गांव की जनता के लिए जो शहर के गरीब जनता के लिए आम जीवन से जुड़े हुए विषय हो उन विषयों को चुना है बट वॉट स्पार्क इक्वल कॉमेंट व थिंग्स दैट वर प्राइम मिनिस्टर लेफ्ट अन टच इन हिज एड्रेस एंड आर प्राइम मिनिस्टर डजेंट हैव इज फेस टू टॉक अबाउट all his day all his union ministers but rather picking up small small issues like this and it is not going to help our country everybody was expecting that the prime minister would break his silence on lalit gate unfortunately today the prime minister failed to live by the standards he had set for himself and the standards he had espoused he had promised he would set within his party and his government the bjp defended prime minister staying away from the controversy also speaks on subjects that may be relevant to them maybe on suggestions sent to them and many things that are in the interest of the country he shares with them so these are important initiatives of the government that involve and that are for the benefit of the people of india and i don't accept the congress party seeking to constantly politicize each and everything that is in india's interest Congress leaders also criticized the Prime Minister for maintaining his silence on the controversial issues that have been dominating the headlines since last week. This is a functioning government, a working government that is totally wrong. What promises Modi ji has given during the run up to the elections in the last one year they did not implement the programs. Also one by one the central sector programs they are uh, dropping it and uh, farmers are in distress. The Prime Minister's address on Sunday marked the ninth edition of his radio program Man Ki Baat. Modi praised his government by calling it "Kam Ki Sarkar." Kam karne wale sarkar. Jab bank mein jan. Bureau report, Rajya Sabha TV. Well, heavy rains in Varanasi forced the Prime Minister to cancel his visit to the city. Now, this city recorded uh, 38 millimeters of rain in just three hours. Well, Uttarakhand and Gujarat also witnessed the fury of floods. Nine lions and many other wild animals died after they drowned in Shetranji River that flows alongside the Gir Wildlife Sanctuary. Heavy rains led to the cancellation of Prime Minister Narendra Modi's visit to Varanasi. Non-stop overnight downpour flooded the entire DLW ground where he was scheduled to address a public meeting. The Prime Minister was slated to announce schemes worth 2000 crore rupees including the integrated power development program. Barish ki sambhavna 2 se 5 ke beech mein thi. Us hisab se nirnay yahi aaya hai ki karyakram Varanasi aagman ka nirast ho gaya hai aur aage phir kabhi banega. Abhi koi date nahi hai. Abhi koi date tha nahi. Elsewhere in the country the flood fury continued to disrupt normal life 
In Uttarakhand, evacuation of pilgrims had to be stepped up after rains caused the suspension of the Char Dham Yatra to Kedarnath and Badrinath. The Punjab government sent a high-level rescue team to oversee the evacuations at Hemkund Sahab, where bridges and roads were damaged. In Assam, Sonitpur and Lakhimpur districts were flooded. Gujarat saw a flood-like situation in Saurashtra that includes forest areas of Amreli. The death toll of Asiatic lions has climbed to nine with the recovery of four more carcasses from the district. Carcasses of several other animals were also found. Setrunji Nadi mein baad aayi hai. Usme aat nau aat se nau dead body mil chuki hai aur jada milne ki bhi sambhav na hai. How jitni team hai hamari. काम कर रही हैं पूरा लोकेट करने का कि कहां पर क्या नुकसान हुआ है पूरे इस एरिया में हमने सूचना दी है कि पूरे एरिया को स्कैन किया जाए जिससे पता चले कि कोई जानवर कहीं पर नुकसान हुआ है तो लोकेट हो The Met Department said Bihar, Central and East Uttar Pradesh will receive good rainfall for the next two days as well. A western disturbance is also expected to affect hilly areas in North India leading to moderate to heavy rainfall. Bureau report, Rajya Sabha TV. And for more updates from across the country, here is Nationwide. An earthquake measuring 5.6 on Richter scale rocked Assam, Meghalaya, West Bengal and Bhutan at 6.35 in the morning today. Three people were reportedly injured and a lion sculpture of an ancient temple was damaged in Guwahati. The epicenter of the tremor was in Kokrajhar. At least two armed suspected militants were killed today in a gun battle with security forces in Meghalaya's North Garo Hills district. Acting on intelligence inputs, a special team and troops from Assam's 19 Dogra Regiment raided the hideouts last night when the incident took place. An electric multiple unit local train crashed into the dead end buffer at Churchgate in Mumbai and caused panic among the commuters. Eyewitnesses claim the train got decoupled and jumped the front of the platform upon hitting the buffer. The cause of the mishap is yet to be determined. In News at 6, we'll take a very short break. But coming up next, an explosion due to coloured flammable powder during a water park party in Taiwan injures over 500 people. That and much more after a short break. Do stay with us. Welcome to our special report, the program that brings you a ground zero view from whichever part of the country the Rajya Sabha TV cameras are travelling. It is the same village where the Telangana agitation actually began. We at Rajya Sabha TV bring you the first pictures of the landfall site. This is the main nerve centre where the legal battle for the Kaveri water dispute began. When you are moving around this Niyamgiri Hill area, there are 41 streams like these which you have to cross. No one understands India better than we do. Watch Special Report only on Rajya Sabha Television. Welcome back after the break. Now, External Affairs Minister Sushma Swaraj urged Southeast Asian countries to explore avenues in India to help Prime Minister's Make in India initiative a success story. Now, speaking during a conference in Thailand, she also asserted India's commitment towards the Act East policy to boost its ties with the nations. Now, Sushma Swaraj is in Thailand on a two-day official visit to attend the 16th World Sanskrit Conference. During her two-day visit to Thailand, External Affairs Minister Sushma Swaraj pitched for a stronger relationship with Southeast Asian nations. Under the Modi government, India's Look East policy has been morphed into a proactive Act East policy. Sushma sought to have the Southeast Asian nations to join hands to develop India and exploit various investment avenues. In an effort to boost PM's pet project Make in India, she urged the business community in Thailand to help boost employment and improve infrastructure. I urge all of you also consider the avenues for collaboration in India so that you could also contribute to the ambitious initiative government of India aimed at bringing affairs to its citizens. 
Sushma also spoke about the importance of strengthening bilateral relations with Thailand in fields of commerce, culture and connectivity. There is new level of interest from across the world in building partnerships of space, investment and innovation in India. I invite all of you to also become a part of this mission. We would be happy to provide all necessary support in your endeavor. Sushma also co-chaired the 16th World Sanskrit Conference in Bangkok. The two countries will sign an MOU on establishment of Nalanda University. An MOU on establishing an Ayurveda chair in one of the Thai universities is also on the agenda. Sushma is expected to co-chair the India-Thailand Joint Commission meeting, during which both countries will sign a double taxation avoidance treaty. They will also exchange instruments of ratification on extradition treaty signed between them in 2013. Bureau report, Rajya Sabha TV. And India has reiterated the urgency to expand the United Nations Security Council's permanent membership for its inclusion. Now, India's bid for a place at the high table has been backed by US, UK, Australia and other countries. India said that the efficacy of the UN was undermined due to its skewed representation. As a result, it was not being able to contain violent crises around the world. Since its inception, the UNSC has had five mem permanent members with the power to veto resolutions. Change in uh, the last few years has been a focus uh, into the process of how to create the additional seats that are required in order for countries like India to become permanent members. It is our hope that in this session of the General Assembly, which ends on the 14th of September this year, that we will be able to agree on a process to create the additional seats. Unfortunately, the last 70 years have shown a mushrooming of crisis all around the world. And the latest statistic of 60 million people displaced by war speaks for itself. On to some international news. Well, the uncertainty over Greece's future grows as Eurozone rejected a bailout extension proposed by the Prime Minister Tsipras. The European Central Bank is expected to end emergency lending to Greece's bank soon. The bailout for heavily indebted Greece expires on Tuesday. The future of Greece hangs in the balance as Eurozone Finance Minister shut the door on extending a credit lifeline to Athens, leaving it to face a default. This comes after the Greek PM Alexis Tsipras requested to extend the bailout program beyond the June 30 deadline to repay loans to the international creditors. The European Central Bank's Governing Council has decided to stop emergency lending, something key to the Greek banks in the hours of crisis. I've always said and will say that the door is uh, open. It was not um, the institutions that walked away from the last talk slides last night. It was the representatives of the uh, Greek government, not us, that said the talks have come to an end in a negative way. It was the Greek government who have said uh, what is on the table now uh, deserves a no. The process hasn't ended. It'll never end, probably. Uh, we will continue to work with Greece. Man muss ja damit rechnen, dass bei dieser Entscheidung in den kommenden Tagen äh, Griechenland in äh, akute Schwierigkeiten äh, kommen wird. Greeks Parliament on Sunday gave a green light to Cyprus bailout referendum on July 5th on creditor proposals for reforms in exchange for loans. They are yet to vote on whether to accept or reject the latest terms offered by creditors to Athens. The refusal of the Eurogroup today to endorse our request for an extension of this agreement will certainly damage the credibility of the Eurogroup as a democratic union of partner member states and I'm very much afraid that that damage will be permanent. The Greek PM's move comes after five months of negotiations which ended in stalemates with Greece accusing the creditors of trying to take harsh austerity measures. Greece has a 1.6 billion euro debt due to the International Monetary Fund which will expire on Tuesday. Bureau report, Rajya Sabha TV. And on to the other big international story. More than 500 people were injured when an explosion ripped through a party near Taiwan's capital Taipei late on Saturday. Around 200 of them are in intensive care with major burns. Now, according to footages available of the incident, a ball of fire ripped through the crowd attending the celebrations at a water park. According to a preliminary report, uh, a coloured powder apparently ignited after being discharged from the stage onto the audience. Now, authorities have banned the use of the powder till the investigation is completed. 
Now, health officials have said that most of the victims have suffered over 50% of burns and they have inhaled a large sum of black carbon dust. The organizers of the party have been detained for questioning after the fire tore through crowds at the party. <laughs> Ongshi well, the cause of that inferno is still uncertain. And more news from across the world in Global Buzz. Nuclear talks are underway in Vienna. Iran, US and European negotiators are intensifying efforts to curb Iran's nuclear program ahead of the 30th of June deadline. While EU foreign policy chief uh, said that the agreement will be tough, it is not impossible. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu accused world powers of approaching a bad deal. The man suspected of decapitating his boss and pinning his head to the gates of a gas factory in France sent a selfie with a severed head. The selfie picture was sent via the WhatsApp messaging system to a phone number in North America. The attack happened on Friday. About 100 demonstrators gathered in central Tunis on Saturday protesting against terrorism after a gunman killed 39 people at a beach hotel in an attack claimed by Islamic State on Friday. The rally was organized by Tunisia's main opposition party, Popular Front. Meanwhile, tourists and local police locals are paid tributes to the terror attack victims on the Tunisian beach. The number of death toll in South Korea, due to MERS, increased to 32 after the health ministry reported another death today. A 55-year-old victim died late on Saturday. The health ministry withheld the identity of the person due to privacy reasons. The total number of confirmed MERS cases in South Korea so far is 182. Another very short break here. Up next, we'll get you all the sports news, including Indian shuttler pair of Jwala Gutta and Ashwini Punapa reached the final of Canada Open. Stay with us. Get live Rajya Sabha session. News, views, reports and analysis you can trust on social media. Subscribe, follow, like Rajya Sabha Television. Welcome back after the break and tennis returns to its most famous site on Monday with Wimbledon set to get underway at the All England Club. Well, all eyes will be on Serena Williams who is halfway through a calendar slam, the first in women's or men's category since Steffi Graf's feat back in 1988. Well, in men's singles, Rafael Nadal is looking forward to turning his season around while defending champion Novak Djokovic remains one of the top favourites this year. Top seeds in this year's Wimbledon Championship are busy training for the third Grand Slam of the year. Serena Williams is odds-on favourite to complete a year of Grand Slams in the pursuit of her sixth Wimbledon title. A seventh title will take her career Grand Slam titles to 21, just one behind Steffi Graf and three short of Margaret Court's all-time record. If she manages to win the title and the US Open in August, she would be the first tennis player to complete a calendar year slam for the first time in 27 years. It doesn't make it feel any different, um, which I think is a good thing because I don't feel 
any pressure to win all four, and I've been saying that, but I really don't feel that pressure. I mean, maybe if I were to happen to win here, then maybe I might start feeling it after that. In the men's section, it would be a four-way battle between defending champion Novak Djokovic, French Open winners Stan Wawrinka and former Wimbledon championships Rafael Nadal and Andy Murray. After a disastrous season so far, Nadal is looking forward to get back to his winning ways at the All England Club. Federer too is giving him a chance for another shot at the title. Losing or winning doesn't matter, but it's good to be healthy on, on a sort of phrase that the second surprise, uh, second most important surprise in my career, without any doubt. It's been the best preparation I've ever had for Wimbledon, for obvious reasons, because we have a week more on grass. But I'm sure that I'm not the only one saying that this year. I'm sure everybody will say the same. However, top seed Djokovic remains the favourite. He hopes to bounce back from his disappointing defeat at the French Open this year. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. And all the other sporting action in sports beat. Indian women's badminton doubles pair of Jwala Gutta and Ashwini Punapa cruised into the final of the Canada Open. The pair defeated Japanese pair of Shiho Tanaka Hora Yonemoto in straight games 21 17 21 16. Third seeded Indian pair will now face the top pair of Elfie Muskins and Selena Peng from Netherlands in the final. India will take on Australia in the Men's Hockey World League semi-final in Antwerp today. In the first two group matches, India defeated France and Poland. On Saturday, India held to a draw against arch-rivals Pakistan. Now, India has already ensured its berth for the Rio Olympics after winning gold in the Asian Games. After taking note of the fatigue factor, India is likely to rest senior players for the upcoming tour to Zimbabwe. Skipper Mahindra Singh Dhoni might be given a break when the selectors meet to pick the squad on Monday. Rohit Sharma and Suresh Rana are among those in running to replace Dhoni as the captain in the ODI series. Paraguay stunned World Cup semi-finalist Brazil in penalty shootout to reach the semi-final of the Copa America. Darius Gonzalez spotted two penalties to help Paraguay beat Brazil 4-3 after both sides were ended regulation time with a goal each. Paraguay will now face Argentina in the semi-final. Well, that's it from me and my team in this edition of News After 6. Thanks so much for watching.